Hey there everyone, this is David Trecivi again, and today I'm going to give you a grading breakdown of a shot that I did a couple of months ago, but it's finally something that I can show you guys. So what we've got here is a uh, single shot from a uh, Limoncello ad. One of the things we wanted to focus on um, is this Limoncello, is a pink Limoncello, so uh, this girl's hair is very important, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, but basically I'm just going to walk you through a quick polishing of a shot that uh, we go through uh, something from this to this. Um, and we'll try and do it quick, but I'll try and also talk you through some things. So what we've got here is, is our starting shot. This is Red Epic. And um, I've got it loaded into an ACES project, which uh, won't really affect what we're doing um, in terms of the grading process, but it is something that'll that'll change your starting point. And, but that's a conversation for another time. What we want to do first when we're starting with any shot, and uh, this is a commercial, so we've got some luxury here, so we can spend a little bit of time on it instead of, you know, trying to hit 500 shots in a day for a, a half hour episodic. So uh, let's blow up the shot and take a look at it and see what we notice. Um, first thing is that, you know, overall the levels are very even throughout, so we're probably going to want to set off her a little bit. Um, taking a quick look at any problem areas you might see, uh, this is clipped, this is gone, so uh, there's nothing we can do about that, but hopefully we'll be able to uh, sort of blend that in so people don't notice. The model's got a little bit of a thing right here where you might decide we want to take that off. There's a spot on her shirt down here which we might want to get rid of. And she's got this uh, pretty heavy green cast on one side of her face. There might be a, a green sign or, or something over there, you can see it down here too. That's reflecting green light onto her and, and sort of giving her this gross pallid complexion. So we'll want to try and take that off. But everything else from beyond that is is probably just going to be balancing and, and making sure the colors look right. So I mean we're already starting off with a pretty good looking shot. So uh, let's dig in. There is no correct way to grade. There's no correct process. There's no correct number of notes to use. You can use as many or as little as possible. It's not uncommon for me to do a whole shot in just two notes if uh, I don't have time and if I have lots of time and uh, producers want to get nitpicky, we can fill up this whole screen with nodes. So it's really a matter of preference and of what you like to do. The typical accepted way is to start with your general level corrections, make sure you get your general color corrections, and then start digging into nitpicky things like vignettes and uh, cleaning up these uh, artifacts, you know, making her hair pop and um, all sorts of little details like that. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, I, down here I've got my control board you can see. This is a JL Cooper Eclipse CX. Uh, it's a great board. Um, I like it a lot. Okay, so I've got my mouse stuff up now so you can finally see what I'm doing. And um, so let's let's dig into this. So. Starting off, we'll just reset our notes, make sure everything's all clear. And uh, very first thing, maybe I'll dial out some of the screen just to get a little bit more natural. So you can see that's just a very small offset correction and we can already see some of this pallid fluorescent lighting is, is gone. Um, so then let's, let's do our lift and gamma and bump up our saturation. And uh, very quickly, we're already looking significantly better. Uh, we still got lots of green here. Um, and uh, we're a little bit crunchy in some places, and maybe we want to set this background off a little bit more. So let's uh, let's expand to a new node. This is just a, a normal serial node. And uh, let's take a look at this uh, green hue. So what I'm doing is selecting this hue versus hue curve, and I'm selecting uh, this greenish area. I'm going to expand this a little bit because it's easy to add artifacting with your curves. And uh, let me just bounce this up just a touch. And you can see almost immediately all this green stuff that was everywhere making everything ugly is gone and now we've got this very nice peachy skin color uh, maybe a little bit too much we can turn the saturation down a bit but our our green is almost gone there's still some down here and there's still some in her bow but the the stuff that's affecting her skin the side of her head and her nose are gone so look how easy that is it's a great powerful tool it's very easy to go overboard with it um, I mean you can quite dramatically change your picture so uh, it's be careful with it, but it's a great tool. So let's move on from here. Uh, let's add a parallel node there. So let me, uh, let's add a little bit of a vignette to try and set off our talent. So we don't have to look at this ugly concrete background. So I'm just reduce the gain, reduce the lift. So it's looking pretty noticeable right now. And we can go a little bit because this commercial is a little bit larger than life, but the good rule with a vignette is if you notice it, it's too much. So looking at this, I mean, if you're really looking for a vignette, you can definitely see one is affecting this image. But in terms of feeling it, when you turn it off and on, it's easy to tell. But just by itself, you know, 
you don't see a line as opposed to what I see a lot in amateur projects, which is a vignette, you know, that looks something like this. You know, this is easy to tell, you know, this looks like somebody put a vignette or you're using a hundred year old film lenses and this is not what you want. This is very amateur and something that, that doesn't look polished. So we'll turn that off and turn back on our little bit softer shaped vignette and uh, that looks good. So. We're off on a good start. Now let's take care of this this green tone that we still have left here in the bow and the hair. And uh, this one, instead of trying to do it on a curve, let's try and do it with an HSL qualifier. So we'll blow this up, select this right here. And uh, let's turn on just our selection tool. So you can see we've got a lot of extra stuff here, but it's doing a good job picking this up, not so much her dress. So first thing, let's nail down the colors so that we're only getting this stuff. So got a little bit up here. and. You know, this can be pretty rough um, because we are just making a small correction. If you're doing something dramatic like changing colors or something like that, then this needs to be pretty specific. But we have the luxury right now of really dialing in with what we need. So I'll just clean this up a little bit, you know, and uh, that's looking okay. It's not great, but it should get it done. So let's turn that off and uh, let's dial down the green in those. Oh, too much warm it up a little bit let's see what that's doing expand this some okay let's see how that feels it's pretty subtle change, um, but it is making a big difference down here, over here. Um, we could probably go a little bit more, but for the purpose of this tutorial, this is more than enough. So that's a great start right now. Let's move on and talk a little bit more about how we can set her face off. So the lighting here is nice and even with a big soft overcast source, but uh, we want to add a little bit more definition to her face. So this is a great trick um, using an HSL qualifier to sort of enhance her face. And I'm going to do it this way so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. So I kicked up the gain orange real far and so what I'm doing now is navigating over to on my board my luma selectors. So this is this right here if you don't have a board and I'm just clamping down the low end so we're only affecting the bright parts of the image and what I'm trying to do is get this so we're sitting off her cheekbones, her brow ridge, her nose, the parts of her face that should be catching extra light if we're adding a little bit more definition. So that's a good start. Now we'll just soften this down so it sort of spreads across her face. And that's looking good. And if you don't want to do it with this orange tool, you, you can always do it with the highlight tool, which is up to on my board or this button right here. And uh, so now that we've got that selected, we'll navigate back over and uh, increase the gain and the gamma just a touch. And you can see we've got this nice sort of set off on her face. Uh, maybe we'll Turn down our effect a little bit. It's sort of a horrifying image. Let's go back. And uh, it's it's a lot on her shirt, which we don't want so much. So maybe we'll put this mask on her so it's only affecting her face. And uh, there we go. It's, it's a subtle effect, but adds a lot to the image. Um, especially here on her cheekbone, it makes her pop and looks really pretty. So that's a good start. Let's use another HSL qualifier here to grab just her hair. And again, uh, we want to clamp this down so we're a little bit more accurate. We can do a lot with the saturation because her hair is so bright. And that's a pretty good start. Again, we just have to get sort of close because we can throw a mat over that. Because we can throw a mat over that and just not worry about it. So here we go. And so now we've got a pretty good selection of just her hair. And uh, we can brighten it up a touch and saturate it up and uh, maybe shift it a little bit more pink. And that was mostly down there with um, the lift tool pushing it towards purple blue. And uh, just like that, we've got a nice vibrant pink hair. So let's see how we're doing overall right now. We've got a great start. So let's see about cleaning up these little undesirables. So we'll zoom in, we can do it full screen here, 
So just select this. Go ahead and track it. And uh, this shot, she does spin to the side, but this last half of it isn't used, so I'm just going to ignore it for the moment. Um, so that's a great start. And so there's a couple different ways we can do this. We can do things with the blur tool here. You can you know shift that out. Um, but that tends to sort of very obviously smear details. Uh, you can change the midtones detail down here. This is a gray way to do it, probably my favorite, um, which still preserves some of the, the detail, but uh, does a good job of reducing the contrast and uh, getting a little bit of blur in it. And so that's probably what I'll do. And uh, we'll add a serial node to this just to keep them all together. And uh, try and do this down here to her shirt. And this is a very easy one because it's, it stays relatively static. It's on a nice white background. And I'm not going to worry about cleaning up that map, but if we wanted to, we could manually keyframe. And uh, we'll just go back in here and uh, reduce that saturation some, increase, decrease its midtones. And there we go. Maybe I'll increase the lift just a touch. And now she didn't spill pizza on her shirt anymore. So there we go. That's a great, great job so far. Well, let's add another little set of things. And now we'll get really nitpicky because, again, this is commercial. We've got plenty of time to work on it. So maybe we'll add something here on her eye. Make her eyes really pop because she's got those nice blue eyes. And uh, we'll go ahead and drag them. Again, uh, you can manually adjust this. Uh, there's lots of tips and tricks to uh, getting things to track better. And I'm not going to go into them right now because that's well outside how long I want this tutorial to be. Uh, so we'll just pretend that the shot ends right as she spins. And it, it does. Uh, you'll have to take my word for it. So let me just go ahead and we'll boost up the gain here. Boost up the gamma a little bit and then drop down the lift, kick up the saturation, and zoom out. Let's blow it up, do a little bit more. Yeah, that's a nice pop. Okay, it's coming along well. So let's see, what else do we want to do? So this corner down here is maybe a little bit brighter and distracting possibly, same with this column. So we could take that down. Let me add a parallel node. Just uh, We'll do this in three, three rows of parallels because why not? So we'll do this with a gradient. Throw it here. Bring that down a little bit. Maybe turn it some, so it's not so much on her. And there we go. That's a very quick, easy grade on this. We uh, got rid of uh, undesirables here and here. We uh, shifted her hair color a little bit pink. We got rid of this horrible green cast. We took down some of the background uh, to sort of drive in um, your focus on her. And uh, looks looks pretty good. So maybe we'll do a final little color tweak here. Maybe add a little bit of that green back in. Real subtle, just so her skin tone's not quite so peachy. Uh, maybe we'll go back and decrease the saturation a little bit on the background some so she pops even more. Of course, now, now that I've done that, we've got sort of a brighter saturation around here, which if we wanted to, we could sort of do something like this. HSL qualify. We'll clamp it down so we're only affecting this, these higher or these lower saturated areas. Bring this up and uh, clean up it up a little bit. 
that's a good start, but then we, we missed out here. So let me increase this some. And uh, make sure it's not on our talent. And there we go. Now she's really popping. And uh, let's check it out for his premium, make sure there's nothing we missed. And now, if we have lots and lots of time, we can do some soft roll-off stuff over here to try and blend this out. We can focus some more and try and... Well, you know what, let's go ahead and do that. Let's clean up her shirt a little bit more. Let's go ahead and turn off the hue. So we're just getting this selection based on saturation and luminance. And uh, that's a good start. And just because we're being rough, we can just do this with a uh, matte a bit of blur. And turn that down. And now our shirt's a nice pure white. There are other tools to do this um, if you don't want to do it with an HSL qualifier. I'll show you one of those. So I'll turn this off here. And we can do um, something like uh, sap for sap. Select just this so you can see, okay, this is very little saturation here. So, you know, I can select this down and and uh, now the only slightly saturated areas are, are popping. Uh, and you'll notice that that grabs everything, but if I want to just, just to focus this on her shirt here, we could throw a mat on there. Um, another option would be if we didn't want to do sap for sap here because uh, this area is... Uh, pretty strongly delineated via Luma. We could, um, you know, see it's way up here and bring this down. What this can do, you gotta be careful with this. So like you can see those highlights we added to her face with the HSL qualifier are now affected by the same thing. So throwing that mask back on will help alleviate that. But if you have like her arms right there, we'll catch it. So something to keep in mind. This is also a great tool if, um, say you've got a, a dark grade and uh, you're messing with a lot of things and you're manipulating the blacks, but you want to keep your blacks pure so that it gives you that contrast. You can, you know, just very quickly drop this down and now you've got pure blacks across the image. Um, it's not affecting this one because we don't have anything that dark, but it's, it's a great tool. Turn this back on and uh, looks good to me. Uh, the last thing you might want to do is uh, add some grain or denoise or whatever. But to me, this is looking good. This is David Trisivia, and thanks for watching.